The ancient town of Arkaim was founded 4,000 years ago in Russia's southern Urals. According to some estimates, it's as old as the Egyptian pyramids. Today, only the contours of the town remain. But Dr. Gennady Zdanoyevich, the local scientist who discovered Arkaim, has no difficulty finding his bearings. The entrance from the north is more or less identifiable. Entrances from the south and from the east were less obvious, but they were secret entrances leading to underground labyrinths. Strangers had no access to this fortress. Archaeologists have been digging on the site for over 20 years. In summertime, local college undergraduates, including students of Dr. Zdanoyevich, work as volunteers under the guidance of professionals. Guys, look, it's a bone. I think it's a rib. No, it looks more like a hip bone. Ivan has been here many times before. He'll soon write a scientific paper about Arkaim. On the one hand, here I become aware of the fact that man is part of nature. On the other hand, when I cut into all those cultural layers, I clearly realize that man stands apart because he changes nature to suit his needs. Tourists from all over the world have arrived at where the ancient town once stood. Here used to be a street. It has a wooden covering. People might move freely here. Most of the visitors to Arkaim don't care much about historical research. They're attracted instead by the mystical atmosphere generated by over 20 years of excavation work. Let's go to Mount Love. We have some business to attend to, a bit of sorcery. Enough for now. It's summer. Time for love. People with supposed psychic powers and fans of the paranormal have named each of the hills surrounding the ancient landmark. One of them is called Mount Love, another Mount Shamanka, which derives from a Russian word meaning to practice witchcraft. <laughs> the campers start each morning with energizing exercises. Those with psychic skills and bioenergetics experts tell people how to heal themselves. Our hands are our healers. They can do anything. They are the main channels healing deep-seated ailments. You can easily suppress headaches using this energy. This is what you do as if you were combing your hair. After the energy-generating exercises, Irina Ivanova, who believes herself to be psychic, measures the growth of the volunteers' so-called biofields along with her husband. They use special frames to do it. Healers say they move in harmony with the person's energy. This is the edge of the person's biofield. Sometimes the frames pinpointed, sometimes they move toward each other, and sometimes they interplay. Andre and Dimitri, experts on UFOs and extraordinary phenomena, are visiting forests around the village of Malgobka to study natural sources of energy. This area is one of the best-known hotspots for paranormal activity in Russia. Valery Yakimov is a local who's made the biggest contribution to the study of the zone. He's camping out near what's known as Astral Meadow. Valery says he's seen more unidentified flying objects here than anywhere else. Hello there. How are you? Fine. How's the zone? Guys, the zone is becoming more active. Maybe people coming here become more sensitive to its activity. Anyway, they see many unusual things here. Valery Yakimov filmed one of his first encounters with a UFO on video. Fellow experts now refer to him as the one who saw the orange sphere. Clearly. See him clearly in tenfold increase. Valeri says he observes such things nearly every day. In fact, he says he saw a column of light just days before the UFO experts arrived. From here, it went there. It turned into a light spot before it finally disappeared. Some think it's a sphere, but it's not. It's just a source of light. Where'd you see it? Right here. 
Andre and Dimitri decide to use a radiation detector to measure the radioactivity levels where the sphere is supposed to have appeared. Some time ago, the same devices were used in the Russian army. The monitor registers weak radiation coming from the Earth. The radiation poses no hazard to life, none whatsoever. The monitor shows something might have come out of the Earth, but I don't know what it is. The UFO experts don't yet know exactly what causes the radiation. It would be interesting to take measurements right after the object's disappearance. Yeah, that's possible. We need to measure radiation soon after an anomaly. That'll give us a better chance of finding something worthwhile. The village of Ria Utinka, 200 kilometers from Yekaterinburg, is another paranormal hotspot in the Urals. One of the villagers, Nikolai Churkin, has been studying UFOs for 50 years. The Soviet KGB was suspicious of his work. Nikolai was questioned several times and some of his evidence was confiscated, but he has been able to preserve most of it. Here you can see albums, two photo albums with pictures of UFO and reports of our expedition. The Soviet UFO specialist says his interest was roused after his first contact with aliens. That was when Nikolai was only five years old. He maintains that he saw a portal to another dimension in the vegetable garden just outside the house where he lived. I saw a pyramid. It was a white pyramid. And on that day, a human approaching from the other side. And the vegetation here was quite thick. That was where those potatoes are now. And later, I read books by experts on paranormal events, saying it was entry to a different dimension. After that, aliens became a frequent sight in the village of Rirutinka. At least that's what Nikolai says. Well, we saw a flying saucer landing in this forest over there. We were driving from a neighboring village. And at first I thought it was a shooting star or a satellite, but then I clearly saw it was a saucer. Nikolai says that the object was 30 meters in diameter and two and a half meters high, with antennae sticking out of the top. At first, the locals poked fun at Nikolai, but later nearly all Rirutinka villagers found themselves in a similar situation. Nikolai's neighbor was no exception. They say you saw something? Yes. Could you tell me about it? Well, it was a round object, and there were different colors on it. It hovered for a while, and then began moving slowly away. The psychics, healers and shamans meet near Yekaterinburg each summer and share their experiences with one another. Highest expressions, everyone. These people came here from several towns. They first met only a few hours ago, but share a common interest. A set of exercises helping to promote harmony between man and nature. Orange clothes symbolize the joy of life. The color white means purity. These people walk around the meadows for hours on end. Each exercise has a meaning of its own. You touch the earth and communicate with the skies. Everything in you becomes pure and you yourself can purify the world. Nikolai Orzhak, a hereditary shaman, is one of the festival's most important guests. Those who want to attend his sessions sign up well in advance. Some want to know their future. Others feel the need to get over a divorce, while others may be in need of finding a spouse. My aim is to allow people to relax. But it's a combination of relaxation and awareness. A 
state between slumber and wakefulness. When they fall into a trance, I tell them what they should do to keep their souls strong. People who practice similar techniques also seek the healer's advice. One of them is Aramil Buzyakayev, a coach from Kazakhstan. He's a bioenergetics expert. He's asked Nikolai to exercise what he calls a negative force from him. The shaman resorted to his favorite method of hypnotizing the patient. Nikolai performs this type of procedure about 10 times a day. Aramil is pleased with the result. He says the negative force has magically disappeared. I felt a great relief. There was a sensation of lightness all over me. It felt as if energy was pouring into me. And now I'm just fine. As UFO experts Andre and Dimitri wind up their studies in the sighting zone near the village of Malyubka, they decide to talk to the locals. As it turns out, they're not so mystified by the so-called phenomena said to take place in their area. Some believe the anomalies are the result of geographic and atmospheric conditions. Others insist the anomalies result from tests conducted at an army testing range nearby. I think 90% of what people see here is the result of those tests one way or another. After that, they mark out those territories as paranormal zones. That's it. People can't explain what goes on here and invent things. That's much easier to do. After their chat with the locals, the two UFO experts pitch a tent and make a campfire. They still hope that this area will reveal at least some of its secrets. If not on this trip, there's always next time.